a lot of you have been having a lot of problems with a lot of the terminology and a lot of the ideology of brewing. So we're going to clear some of it up right now. Hi, I'm Brian. I'm Derica, and you're watching City Study. To learn to grow and brew, and to take control of your food, hit subscribe now. And don't forget to like, or comment, or both, this video, <laughs> and hit that bell icon so YouTube will know to notify you when we have something new to share. So, in the past, I've said I don't script, and I don't storyboard. I wrote notes. That's it. That's what we're going to talk about. Video's over. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> So really, a lot of people have been having a lot of issues understanding the way alcohol works, the way gravities work, the way the numbers work, and everything like that. And it's okay, because you know what? I, I, it took me a while to figure out, too. And I made mistakes along the way. It's okay. Um, so this is ABV Brewing and You. I just came up with that a little, little while ago. But I thought, you know, this is kind of a cool thing, and we're just going to do a short video. This will not be me rambling for 20 minutes, I promise. Maybe. I should hit the timer so that I know. Yes, I actually have to set a timer now so I don't ramble forever. See that? I just wasted six seconds. Anyway, so first, what's brewing? Don't get me wrong, this is not going to be a super simplistic video that way, but I want to start off with basically brewing means adding yeast to a sugar type liquid to create alcohol. Okay, so the yeast consumes the sugars and creates alcohol. At its simplest, that's brewing. Now, those sugars can be honey, cane sugar, beet sugar, fruits, molasses, you name it. They cannot be stevia, aspartame, lactose, things like that. They are not fermentable sugars. Not going to work. You'll end up with just a sugary water that might grow mold. That's about it. Yeast won't be able to eat that. Um, some other things that we've seen are sweet yeast versus dry yeast. Okay. Some, some companies market yeast that way, and I think it's a little bit of a misnomer. Sometimes they might be intending one thing, or maybe they're intending to falsify a little bit. I don't know. But if someone says, this is a sweet cider meat, cider yeast, not true. It's a sweet cider yeast only under certain conditions. But if you told me it's a, it's a dry cider yeast, I could make a sweet cider with it. The way yeast works, the way alcohol works, is if you want something to be sweet, every yeast has what's called an alcohol tolerance level, and it might range anywhere from 8% to 14% to 18%. The most you can really ferment is about 20, maybe 21 or 22 if you're really, really good. Um, there's been people telling me they're getting 28 and 35% ferments. I'm sorry, you're reading something wrong. That's It's just not possible. It's against the laws of fermentation. It can't work. Um, even with super yeasts and things, it, it's not possible. So 21 to 22 is the absolute maximum. And that's kind of like a high ceiling. Figure 18, 19. That's about as high as you're likely to get. So what happens is the tolerance level, let's say you have a 10% tolerance yeast, just for argument's sake. If you put in enough sugars, that if it fermented out to dry, meaning no more sugars left, it went past 10%, then that means it's going to kill off your yeast or they're going to drown, really, and go dormant kind of at 10%. This is complicated. I need visual aids. <laughs> A lot of people have been admiring our D&D &D books back there and as much as I really wanted to do the sock pucket, sock puppet it's thing. It's hard to say. Yeah, it is. Like Alton Brown. I thought that's a little bit too much of a rip off of his system. So we're going to go a different way. Let's go with this. Let's say this is our yeast, right? Let's say this yeast has a five tolerance. It's just a random number. It's not a percent. It's just five tolerance for alcohol, right? That means at a certain, at five levels of alcohol, it dies or cannot consume anymore. Let's say the white dice are sugar, the red dice are CO2, carbon dioxide, and the black dice and the dark red dice are alcohol, right? If I take, uh, we have eight units of sugar here, right? Throw my yeast into that sugar. What does it do? It starts consuming the sugar and gives off carbon dioxide and alcohol. I know, not in equal amounts, but just for the sake of argument, that's how we're doing it. So that's one alcohol, one carbon dioxide. 
Yeast is still happy. It's good. It consumes more. Now we have two. Consumes more. Three. Consumes more. Four. Consumes more. Five. At this point, yeast stops eating or consuming sugar. Yeast is gone. What are we left with? A bunch of CO2, a bunch of alcohol, and a little bit of sugar. That is an example of the volume of brew that we were making, the gravity of the brew was higher than the yeast tolerance, leaving it sweet. Let's try it again. Let's say yeast has a 10 tolerance. We put the yeast back in, same amount of sugar. Take one out, one comes in, two, two, three, three. Let's just do it, four, five, six, seven, eight. Six, seven, eight. Now, the yeast has nothing left to consume. It drops to the bottom, goes dormant. What are we left with? CO2 and alcohol. No sugar. That's exactly how that works. Maybe on a microcellular level, but that's the concept, okay? So does, I hope that cleared it up. So what Brian is saying through DICE is that it doesn't matter what well, the packet says, right? It matters how you treat it. How you treat it. So what you put it in. The packet is going to give you a guideline for what that yeast can tolerate, yeah. and then if you put in more sugar or less sugar, will determine if it's going to be sweet or dry. Absolutely. Um, some people have mistakenly said, well, hey, I'm just going to dump a bunch more honey in this thing after it's already above the yeah. initial gravity and we're just... And we're... they think it's going to make more alcohol. No. no it's going to make it a lot sweeter. And it might even stall a fermentation if it was happening. And in the reverse, if you're using a small amount of sugar and you say, well, I want this to be sweet, so I'm just going to add more sugar, but you don't add enough to go past its You're just tolerance. making it stronger. You're just going to make a stronger brew and not a sweeter brew. Yeah. The only way that you can stop this process two, three. is if you stop the fermentation oh, yeah. process mid-fermentation. Which is actually difficult to do. By halting the yeast. You can do that by cold crashing, kind of risky. You can do it by multiple, multiple rackings. Like you keep racking, keep racking, keep racking. Eventually it all falls out of solution. That's really risky and takes a lot of expertise and timing. Um, the third way is by the use of chemicals. I just choose not to ever do it that way. Never have, not even once. Um, which means I'm not going to say it's bad. I'm not going to say it's wrong. It's just not how I choose to do it. Um, I just don't feel the need to put extra chemicals, synthetic chemicals, into my stuff. Okay. The way we determine if we want a sweet brew or a dry brew is we determine what's the tolerance of our yeast, and then if we want it sweet, we go beyond that tolerance for the sugars we added, and if we want it to go dry, then we do at that point or less of what the tolerance of the Or we is. back sweeten after it's dry. Either way. Um, you can't tell the difference between residual sweetness and back sweetening. Um, people have tried, you, you can't tell the difference. I think that's enough on that aspect of it. Um, hydrometer readings. I say it all the time, yet people still, please use a hydrometer. I know they're not 50 cents. I know they cost a couple bucks, but it will save you a lot of trouble. And it's not just about knowing the ABV of your brew. Honestly, I couldn't care less. If it, is it 5, 10, 15, 20%? That's as close as I need to be. And that's mostly for a preservation aspect. Anything below 5% will not preserve for more than a week or two, or maybe three or four at most, unless you put it in the fridge. Between 5 and 10%, you can get maybe a month. Okay? Between 10 and 15, you can get several months. Over 15, now you can preserve long term without refrigeration. So that's where it's good to have an idea. And those are rough numbers. Don't take them as exact. It's just in my head. That's pretty much where I go when I'm thinking about things like that. Hydrometer readings, particularly if you do an initial gravity reading, really helps if we run into problems. You can give this information to Brian if you can't figure it out on yourself. Mm -hmm. um, and you can take another uh, reading 
if you think maybe your fermentation has stalled and you can compare those two numbers to see is it fermenting is it not right. fermenting sometimes things go really slow and looking at it you go well it's not bubbling anymore well it might be while you're not watching it counting bubbles is not a reliable method of knowing if it's fermenting or not because it could be done and bubbles are still coming out because there's co2 and other gases in solution you want to make sure that you're actually getting a reliable calculation and that's that's about the biggest piece of tech that i use some people will say use a re refractometer watch this video here i talk about that i'm not getting into it here but basically a hydrometer is reliable all the time hydrometer only for original gravity past that not so reliable. Refractometer. Refractometer. I keep doing that. I just use a hydrometer, period. <laughs> Makes me feel like a mad scientist. Yeah, it's too, so. Anyway, um, you want to take two hydrometer readings minimum, and that is your OG, original gravity, and FG, or final gravity. Those two are the important numbers, okay? You can do intermediate ones and kind of see how it's going. And I do recommend doing that. As you think it's getting towards the end of a fermentation, take a reading, wait a week, take another reading. If those readings don't change, wait one more week. If they still don't change, now it's done. Just because it's stopped at a certain number doesn't really mean it's done. Now, I've been doing this a while. Do I do that many readings towards the end? No because I can usually tell when it's pretty done, and I just give it another two, three weeks sitting under the desk, and then I take a reading, and it's at a point where there's no sugars left, so it's done. Now, some of these that we've done recently are higher, they're higher sugar content, they're meant to have some residual sweetness. Those I will be testing, because I want to stop them at a certain point, and I want to make sure that it worked the way I wanted it to work. The next step is calculate ABV. This is actually really simple. There's apps out there, there's calculators, there's websites, there's everything in the world out there. But, and I'm gonna put this in a little bubble below me, here's how you do it. And it requires a hydrometer to do this. You take your original hydrometer reading, your OG, minus your FG. Now, gravity readings are read in a one point something, something, something format, okay? I've had people tell me their reading was 1.74, and I'm like, whoa! That's just not possible. First, the hydrometer doesn't read that high. We found out today. <laughs> Second, that would be like 40 something percent alcohol. It's just, it, you, you can't do it. There's, it will not ferment if you actually made a, a brew with that much gravity to it. So you take that original gravity minus the final gravity, then you have a number that's probably gonna be point something, something, something. That number times this all important brew number. I don't know what to call it, but it's the master number, if you will. 131.25. That's as close as you're ever going to get to exactly the right number. So you take that number times 131.25 gives you your alcohol content. If you come out with a number that doesn't fall somewhere between 2 and 20 percent, you've done something wrong. <laughs> it's that simple. If you have questions on that, feel free to ask away. Um, a lot of people have been trying to email us. I don't check it as often. I just don't. We use that for our main business, so I don't check it. We but like comments, to have the comments public so that other people yeah, who may have your same you question can get that information. Yeah. And I go through comments every morning while I'm having coffee. Sometimes I've had less coffee, some days I've had more. So if I was mean, I probably hadn't had much coffee. Yet. To make something sweet or dry. We kind of covered this already. I'm just going to go over it really, really quickly. To make something sweet you go past the alcohol tolerance of your yeast, make something dry, you make sure you don't have enough sugars to hit the alcohol tolerance of your yeast. Or you can make something sweet by sweetening it after it's done fermenting if it went dry. How do you raise ABV? This is actually really simple. You have to make sure that your yeast can go that high and you add more sugar. A couple of numbers to remember. For every pound of white sugar per gallon, you get 0 0.046 gravity. For every pound of honey per gallon, you get about 0.035. Honey actually varies by a couple of points, so test your honey. I know the one we got is actually 0.035, spot on. 
Um, other things run a little bit different. Those are the two that I've memorized. I, I don't know the rest. But that way, if I added three pounds of honey, let's say, my specific gravity should be three times 0.035, which is 1.105. Very simple. If that fermented out to dry, I'd have 0 0.105 times 131.25. There's my ABV. Really simple. If you go below one, somebody asked me this, why does it go below one? It's because alcohol is lighter, less dense than water. So therefore, by going below one, it means you really got rid of all the sugars. At 1.000, there's still some residual sugars if you have a reasonable amount of alcohol in there. A really light one, like three, four percent that goes to 1.000, probably not much sugar left. But if you have an 18% brew that's at 1.000, you can bet there's still some residual sweetness in there. That's why sometimes you can still get a sweet brew even at neutral 1.000. Anything I didn't go over? I'm sure I missed something. I just wrote these down real quick. I've been meaning to do this video for a while. I just wanted to throw something out really quickly to get everybody just a good idea. And uh, let's play with my dice. Anyway. If you like this video, give us a like. If you found it entertaining or educational or both, give us a like. And we'll see you next time on City Setting. Bye bye. Thanks, guys. Have a great day. Hey, everybody. Thanks for watching. Don't forget, if you want to learn to grow and brew and take control of your food, hit the subscribe icon down below and don't forget to hit that little bell. That way, you get notified of everything we do. And if you really like what we do, consider becoming a patron. Information in the descriptions of all of our videos. Thanks, guys. Have a great day. All right, get your 20 sided out. What? These are my visual aids. Yeah, 20 sided. Make a save. What am I saving for? You're saving versus tickle attack. Don't you dare tickle me. I got a 13. <laughs> Don't you dare tickle me. <laughs>